In the previous few videos, we created a dual bar spinner. Dual meaning two, or two outside bearings, two outside bars other than the spinning bearing. Now in this video, we're going to create something a little more complex and maybe a little more popular and common, the tri-bar spinner, or a triangular, or tri meaning three bars from the center spinner, or three outside bearings. So to do that, we're going to start the same way as the other one. Now we're not going to use the tubes, even though they're a little faster, because using the cylinder holes will allow us to customize this more easily later. So we'll drag out a, a hole for the spinner, and we need it to be 22 millimeters wide by 7 millimeters thick. So we're going to start with those dimensions for the center bearing. There's our hole for our center bearing. And we need to make a solid casing around that to hold the bearing. So we're going to need to up the sides first to make it nice and smooth, and then we'll duplicate that, and we'll change the dimensions right away, first of all. Okay, and then we're going to make that a solid. Again, the color doesn't really matter. Once you have that a solid, an easy way to line them up is to drag them both and choose the Align tool, and then when you select the center of each dimension, it will line it up that way, and we can then group them together to cut the hole out. This is the same way we did on the other videos. Now from here, there's a little more math involved, because you can think of it like kind of like the spokes of a wheel. You're going to need even spacing and even angles for these protrusions from the center. So really it's like a wheel or a circle with three spokes evenly spaced. To get that even spacing we have to do the math and recognize that a circle is 360 degrees around. So if we want these evenly spaced each one is going to have to be a 120 degree angle. So to do this we're going to take our first ring, duplicate it, and then we can just move it straight down until it's just overlapping. Now we can group this together. This would be like one of the spokes. Now this is the simplest way to do it. We'll show a little more complex way in just a second. And that's a simple spoke where you just have two rings. This will be the middle spinning bearing and this will be an outer weight bearing. From here, we can then duplicate this and then rotate it 120 degrees. Now you'll want to go on the outside of this ring because if you don't, you can't get exactly 120 degrees. So when we rotate this 120 degrees, it'll be at the right angle and then we simply have to move it and position it so it's exactly on top of the other one. All right, and then we can duplicate it again, and it will rotate it again. The nice thing about the duplicate feature in here is it remembers the moves and rotations you did, and it will repeat that process the next time you duplicate. So we have now just made the simplest tri-bar spinner that you can make. However, we're going to make this a little more fancy. And to do that, we can do what we did before. We can select all of it and ungroup them. Now there's actually several different pieces here, so if we want to really do this, we're going to have to ungroup them yet again, because we have groups of groups. Now since we made three duplicates, there's actually several in the middle here, and we can delete some of those if we need to. But the ones we really want to focus on are these outside casings. We want to leave the holes, and perhaps leave the ring in the middle, but let's say we want to customize with some fancier shapes on the outside. Like before, I'll use the heart shape since it's here and easily accessible. Okay, if I wanted this to go straight down here, I could flip it using the flip tool to make it perfectly flipped upside down. We need to make sure that the height is 7, just like the rest of the spinner. And that'll help you also see where the hole is. Now I need to clearly scale this up a bit. So I'll go ahead and drag it down, drag it sideways. Okay, so maybe something like that. You don't want it to be too big. I'm keeping this as small as possible to save time and to save money and to save printing materials when we print this out. Okay, so let's say we have a heart like that. Now if we want to do this process again for the others, we will need to rotate it the same way. And a good way to do that is to duplicate it and rotate it right away as soon as you duplicate it. And I can make this one rotate 120 degrees. And I can move it into position like so. You gotta make sure you have um, a little bit of space around each side or when you 3D print it, it won't fit in there. And then I can duplicate that again and it copies the process. So you can see it's very easy to make a customized bearing this way because the holes are already in position. When we group this together now, those holes will cut back through it. Now there's a nice heart shaped one or maybe it looks like a clover or flower now. If we wanted to make it a little more edgy, we could have done something to that heart first before duplicating it. So for example, we could have cut some more holes in it. Let's make it a little more like a ninja star or something or a flame by cutting some holes into the corner here of this heart. If you click 
top view, it can be a very easy way to compare and see if you actually have enough room. There we go. So now let's see if we can cut into this heart here by selecting the heart and the two holes. And now I will group that together. And you can see it changed the shape a bit. So this is the way you can very quickly and easily make um, fancier shapes just by using basic shapes and then cutting into them. Again, I duplicated it. I'll move it 120 degrees. And then move it into position where I want it. I want to make sure it looks like the other one. And then duplicate it again. And it's that simple to make a fancy tri-bar spinner.